Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Dill Cam Ward, the Miami Hurricanes, get it done again on Saturday. And let's preface with this, like, it's hard to win college football games. We see a lot of college football teams lose games that they shouldn't lose every single Saturday. And the one positive is that Miami continues to win these football games. But the most frustrating aspect for myself and a lot of the Miami Hurricane fans, this team continues to have problems that we kind of assume are going to get cleaned up and they just don't get cleaned up. I mean, giving up over 300 passing yards to a Duke team that it really just ain't that good on offense. I think a lot of Miami Hurricane fans are frustrated. Want to get into, Dill, kind of a brief conversation of, one, what went well for Miami, what didn't go so well for Miami. We're going to dive into this game probably tomorrow morning, kind of get a rewatch and really talk about what's going on with this defense. Now, before we get into it, as always, to the Miami Hurricane fans, positive talk, would love it in the comment section. If you all got bones to pick, would love to hear that as well. It's going to be a mix from both from the boys. I think most importantly, the amount of continued support for the, from the Miami Hurricane fans. It's It's been amazing. Y'all know we love talking this team. Appreciate you guys. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Going to do a deeper dive on this football game once the fellas rewatch the game. Adil, let's get into this. I, look, when you have Cam Ward going for 400 yards, five touchdowns, like it's hard to lose a lot of games. And this is why I continue to be really high on this team. When you have Cam Ward in this type of Miami Hurricanes offense, it's really dang hard to stop, and there's just not many teams that can beat them in a shootout. But if you're a Miami Hurricane fan, we don't want to get in shootouts every single week, and that kind of continues to be the case. Let's start on defense. Let's start with, I think, my biggest problem, and that is in the secondary, just not really having an identity. It seems like they continue to be not lined up the right way. They're blowing assignments. They're really bad in man coverage right now. Dill, if you're Lance Gidry, it's kind of an all hands on deck in terms of trying to figure out something that the secondary can go to to have some confidence for four quarters of a football game. And one fundamental issue I kind of have is they're doing a fair amount of rushing three men. Like, why would you be rushing three men when you know you're – I don't care how many guys it feels like they're lining up in the back end. They're just not making it happen. So, again, the fact they're going to that – I really do think they should be getting four guys getting after the quarterback and trying to turn loose your best defense, your best part, portion of that defense. That's the D line. Cause at the end of the day, I just look like, again, Frederick played a really, really good game. They were able to take the ball away, which was obviously a positive, but they just really, really struggle to communicate pass routes off and kind of when they're given anything with a pick or a misdirection, it feels yeah. like they're relentlessly. It, it almost, it's like they, they, they're playing so much man coverage. And I was actually t- saying a couple of weeks ago, I'd like to see them play more man coverage because they're struggling giving off in zone. But now when they're playing man, like Duke knows they're going to man and they're running a ton of mesh concepts, a, a ton of pick plays that are just, it's clearly beating Miami. And there's not a lot of communication. Like you can tell this team is, I don't know if necessarily know if I want to go as far as say poorly coached, but they seem unprepared and confused at a lot of points in this football game, I'm kind of with you. I think Miami's got to figure out a way to lean into where they're elite. They're elite on the defensive line. They're elite specifically rushing the passer. You got to figure out a way for this front seven, this defensive line to continue to take pressure off the secondary. Now I do want to talk about some positives. You are finding a true cornerback one in OJ Frederick. And for the Miami hurricane fans who've been rocking with the boys, we did a little film study on him Wednesday afternoon This kid's been a revelation for Miami. And as he continues to gain confidence as a true freshman and what I think is truly develop into that true cornerback one that you don't necessarily need to worry about, that's a massive storyline because then you can start allocating to other portions of the football field. But as of right now, you got one cornerback that you trust, a lot of other defensive backs that you don't really trust. Dill, I I also think when you talk about going to man covers, then you got the issue they don't play the ball particularly well in the air. It's like they They do not penalties, they don't get their hands on it. It's like again, aside from Frederick, like you even look, Porter, I don't think's playing great football right now either. I mean, taking penalties, not getting his head around and not making plays on the ball. So again, they gotta figure out something. And I think honestly, it starts with being able to affect quarterbacks a little bit more consistently, if you will. And a lot of that to me, it's I mean, you just got to turn this defensive line. The thing is, like, there's the, the blown assignments are happening so quick. Like, the pass rush doesn't really have a chance to get at home because guys are kind of getting open really quickly. There's also a conversation that you got to happen with terms like your the schematics of your defense having Kiko Maui, no, who I actually think played a pretty damn good game. 
he's consistently lined up in man coverage with running backs, which is obviously not the the strong suit of his game. Like you got to scheme around that. Like Duke shouldn't be consistently getting Kiko mashed up one on one in man coverage and kind of just picking it apart. Like it seemed like Duke kind of knew what Miami was going to do. They knew how to attack it. They were attacking it all afternoon. Now give Lance Gidry some credits. I thought some of the second half adjustments were, were pretty damn good, especially getting into the fourth quarter. I think if you're Miami though, like what you're concerned with is if you keep letting teams hang in games, like you're, you're, you might eventually lose one. And if you're Miami, you don't want that to happen, especially as you get into the college football playoffs. We'll, we'll both rewatch this one tonight and kind of get a, a little bit more of a collective thought on what's going on with this defense tomorrow morning. Let's get into this Miami Hurricanes offense where, again, when you have Cam Ward, who I didn't even think played all that good early, like it, it's huge because he, he's such a gamer. The, the moment's never too big. I didn't think Restrepo played an elite game, and I know the stat. I mean, the, that's crazy, right? Eight catches, a buck, 46, three touchdowns. I thought he left some plays on the field and not made, didn't make some plays that he normally makes. Here's the one bone I have to pick with this Hurricanes offense, and I'm being in uh, – they scored 53 points. I want to see them lean into the run game more for a couple of different reasons. One, I want them to run. You look at, I mean, Damian Martinez, Mark Fletcher, both averaging over 5.4 yards per carry. You love to see that. I want to see them lean more intentionally into the run because I feel like a lot of their run plays are coming off RPOs where you can't really let your offensive line get downfield because Cam Moore can keep it and throw it. When they say, hey, we're just going to run a run play, we're going to get let our offensive linemen get downfield, get up to linebackers, they run the football really, really stinking well. I would like to see them have a little bit more design runs without any of the RPO. One, because it takes a little pressure off of Cam Ward, but more importantly, it allows you to eat up a little bit more clock, take some pressure off the defense, and kind of dominate games a little bit where you feel like Miami should be dominating at points. I agree with you because at the end, like they're not playing a ton of games, especially in the first halves on their terms, it feels like. Again, they're getting kind of on their heels a bit, especially because their defense at the end is not playing great. But I'm kind of with you. I think if they run the ball and just control the game and possess it a little bit more, you just inherently feel a little bit more in control. And right now, I feel like they have the ability to really do that. I mean, even say you look like without even really any explosive runs, you're still averaging five, six yards a pop. It's like – Again, you just do that and you just break a team and beat them down. Like you can control games a little bit better and in avoid to getting into a situation. And Cam Ward right now has played in almost every game good enough down the stretch where it just doesn't matter if they're in yeah. control of it because they're going to make big plays and they're going to score a lot of points. But I'm kind of with you. Like when you go play at Clemson, I think you'd prefer it to look a little bit more in control than probably some of these games against much lesser teams. Yeah, I, I think this this team again. It's I, the, why we don't bet against him is I ain't betting against Cam Ward. He's playing like a Heisman Trophy winner. Had another game like that today. Lean on the run game. Try to take some pressure off your defense. You're seeing guys stand up. Like Ruben Bain had a good game. I thought again, Kiko. I thought played some of his best football we've seen all of 2024. OJ Frederick continues to be an absolute dude on the boundary. Mm-hmm. You scored 53 points. I believe you covered the spread, which is, I mean, again, like you talk about we're nitpicking Miami because we know they can be a better football team than what we've seen from them. You want to see them continue to try to hit their stride going into the ACC championship, going into the college football playoffs. We haven't necessarily seen it yet. You're seeing the glimpses of it. If you're a Miami Hurricanes fan, you're just kind of hoping we see those glimpses a little bit more consistently. We'll sign it out there. Again, appreciate you guys rocking with it. Would love to hear from y'all in the comments section. Appreciate all the support. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We'll talk to y'all later.